Okay, now we have um, Andrew Wordsworth. Come here, CEO of Sustainable Ventures and the undisputed uh, super co-host of yesterday's sponsor dinner. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you very much for being back. Thank you. Uh, good, good evening, everybody. Um, I will try and whip this through as quickly as possible so that you can all get to the drinks, which I know is the main, uh, main feature. Um, so Jan very kindly gave me the, uh, the, this uh, nice, uh, nice title to talk to. Um, and uh, as you know, you don't argue with Jan. You just get on and, and, and do what he says. So capital efficient development of resource efficient startups. Bit of a mouthful. Um, so my background, um, I've been in clean tech uh, for about 15 years, energy, sort of all my career. Um, I've been involved in the creation of uh, and delivery of over 15 ventures uh, that have attracted over £250 million in equity investment. Uh, four exits, uh, myself and the team, including Peter Short, who was one of the sort of veterans of the uh, 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 early stage sector in the UK. Uh, most recently, eCar, which was acquired by Europe Car in July this year, uh, which was four years from uh, conception and concept all the way through to exit. Um, just wanted to look at, sort of set the context for um, this. Um, I don't know, hands up who remembers sort of 2008, 2009, uh, the heady days when uh, all the Bloomberg New Energy Finance graphs shot upwards, uh, private equity, there was a big sort of overhang. Um, you know, it was happy days. Um, and that was really, to me, was sort of one of the sort of first phases of clean tech because there was all this money coming in and therefore people developed the businesses that suited. You know, 250 million was not unusual. We did property you know, development companies, we did property funds, we did all kinds of things. Deep technology development, uh, people were you know, putting money into Pelamis and you know, building large bits of steel. Um, unfortunately, uh, things have turned a little bit uh, uh, more tricky. Um, and uh, just sort of picking off uh, some, some graphs again, Bloomberg New Energy Finance has shown a steady decay of investments coming into clean tech. Uh, compare that with you know, fintech uh, and, and even transportation. Um, last sort of two, three years have seen you know, the resurgence of, of those sectors. And you could pick other sectors as well. Clean tech is really getting left behind a little bit. Um, and a lot of that is this overhang of your people, as I say, people spending £20 million building a big piece of steel, towing it out to the middle of the North Sea and watching it sink. You know, these, 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 are, you know, these really hurt, hurt, hurt the investments. And it meant the LPs are staying away, which means that the money's not there, and so on. Um, whereas, I guess, you know, this is where we sort of started to pivot, and it's when we set up Sustainable Ventures in 2011. Um, you know, we sort of said, look, you know, the old, uh, what, what's going to happen? What, what's the, what the old rules? And how can we, how can we change? Um, so this talk isn't about saying there isn't a need for capital-intensive businesses. It isn't saying there isn't a need for technology. It's saying that given the resources we had available, given our view of the market, that we chose a different route and we chose a different kind of clean tech business. So three reasons why, uh, you know, the last, uh, say, four, four, four or five years, really been focused on, on these things. Um, first of all is, uh, I'll come back to this later, is that there are resource efficiency in every single sector. You know, quite a lot of time, I think the clean tech sector is quite sort of looking at itself. I'm in the electricity sector. I'm in the storage sector. Um, if you take a sort of broader consumer view, and again, thinking back to those investment trends, you know, we're competing for investment dollars uh, not from other clean tech, you know, other, other clean tech things, but from people who want to get into transportation, who are thinking about fintech, who are thinking about e-commerce. You know, it, there's a lot of sort of fungibility, and, and you sort of again, you'll see these waves. You know, clean tech in 2008 was the thing. You know, now it's no longer. It'll come back. Um, but there are those opportunities. You know, anything you can use less of is basically, to me, is how I would define the broader sort of resource efficiency clean tech space. Um, secondly, there's a lot of proven technologies. I think most of the startups pitching here today are you know, developing technologies, developing things through there. Um, I think this was taken from a McKinsey study. Over half the technologies are already there. Um, you know, the, the biggest carbon saving technology in the UK is uh, glass fiber uh, loft insulation. It's probably saved more carbon than anything else. And it's just a role that people kick off and, and put down through loft joists. So you, some unsophisticated, but delivering that at scale, building businesses that can take that technology and, and roll it out, 
don't require a lot of money because they're very fast at revenue and they're, they're very, very fast there. And the third area, the third sort of theme, is where you've got these converging value chains. So if you start saying, uh, you know, I'm in the, uh, the, uh, the transportation area uh, rather than I'm in the electric vehicle industry, then suddenly you, you know, you've, you've got, uh, say, as with the Europe car deal, you've got sort of you know, traditional car hire companies, they're moving with tech companies, they're buying, you know, you've got Uber, which is, you know, essentially is not really a transportation company, it's a software company. Um, and, it's, uh, and so you've got all these different things and, and lots of sort of speed and lots of integration. So for us, the prerequisite, I say, is taking a slightly different view. Um, and uh, this is from, I, I used to work at Head Up Carbon Trust Enterprises, uh, which is where a lot of those sort of companies came from. Um, and what we did there was sort of take, rather than taking a sort of a, a kind of process thing of saying, I've got a power station, it was mapping those emissions onto sort of end uses. So it's sort of basically doing sort of high-level carbon footprinting to say, okay, how do I take, take those things out? And so if you map those against UK sector expenditure, you start taking a different view. And again, you start saying, I'm in you know, the transport area or the housing area. Um, and one of the things that we did with Sustainable Ventures in terms of looking for opportunities was say, okay, let's look for where the kind of the rate of changes is the fastest, both in terms of the sort of market and science and technology, and then of, of sort of you know, st how, how the industry was structured. Um, and I say, it's, it's, I sometimes describe what, you know, the areas that I'm now involved in as uh, bricks and wheels, you know, so domestic energy, private vehicles, um, very consumer focused, very fine, largely because the rate of external change in those sectors, particularly um, if anybody's been involved in the Green Deal sector that I, I talked about in the UK, you know, this is, this is an insane sector. Anybody's involved in the solar sector, if you're deploying stuff, you know, rates, everything's going around, people are moving, it's, 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 it's quite crazy. That is really good for a startup. It's quite bad for a corporate, but it's really good if you have a startup agile mentality and you can spot those opportunities, scale them up quickly. And I say within sort of three, four years, you've got, you've got you know, people will be looking for those things that they can take, corporates can take and scale. And that's very much you know, our, our, our business model. So I promised I'd finish, as, I wouldn't use my entire 10 minutes, so I will do that. Um, but I would like to say, um, you know, we mentioned about the, the Sustainable Bridges, which is one of our uh, uh, sort of, yeah, again, very <laughs> property-based venture, um, uh, based near London Bridge, hosted the party last night. It's a co-working space. It provides affordable, flexible locations. I think uh, 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 you heard from Peter, I think this morning, from Green Runnings is one of our tenants there. Uh, uh, Co-control that James is going to talk about is also there. Um, it's designed, f you know, basically to provide that, that accommodation. It's got workshop space. It's got, you know, things that the, the kind of if you're involved in these things. So if anybody is looking for space anywhere from two desks to ten desks, we have probably one slot left uh, because, as I say, we've been through. I think three companies raised over £700,000 in the last three four months. They're all expanding rapidly. So if you're looking for somewhere, it's five minutes walk from London Bridge please do get in touch because, uh, as I say, we'd love to sort of carry on working with, with you guys uh, and help people grow. Great. Thank you very much. I'll be there from time to time, promised. <laughs> okay.